Mortal Kombat is one of the most popular and exciting entertainment properties in history. Creating a motion picture was not only logical, it was inevitable. And the reason that I got involved in Mortal Kombat, aside from the phenomenon of it, was because the underlying story is wonderful. And the underlying story is, is again, based on these old myths and legends, which is about three human beings who are kind of tapped on the shoulder by fate. You have been chosen to defend the realm of Earth in a tournament called Mortal Kombat. Defended from who? We've also gathered the best martial artists in the world ever gathered for a film in this movie, and they're going to do things that are amazing. And you're going to see great fighting in this movie. Action! I wanted to make the movie really, really, really cool looking. That's Paul Anderson, who's our director, who's a hot, hip, young, cool British director. Action! I've always been interested, no matter what I've done, in making movies for young people. Francois will make his entrance. We'll face off for a moment, then fight starts. It's the market that I really like. It's the audience that I like. It's what I like to make movies that I grew up enjoying. I really wanted to find actors who could play Liu Kang, who could make Liu Kang really engaging. And, and that's, with actors like Robin Shu, I think we have the best of both worlds. Here we have a man who can run 12 feet up a wall and do a backflip and then, you know, do the most amazing martial arts. You know, this guy can really do it. But also when he's being hurt, when he's talking about the death of his brother in the story, you know, you believe this man. He's a good, good actor. And I think the combination of great acting and nice, strong storyline and fantastic martial arts, that's the recipe for a really strong film. Liu Kang, the character, comes from the game. So in our goal of finding someone who could do it, who could really do the stuff, we set out to look, to look for a Robin show. And we found him in Hong Kong. Mortal Kombat is Robin Shu's first American film. The transition to Hollywood filmmaking techniques proved to be more challenging than he expected. I figured, like, OK, here's America, and it's going to be easy. Yeah. It's a cut. <laughs> I gotta do something. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> they do everything in masters. Everything. They do a wide master, they do a medium master, they do a closed master. And they say, Excuse me, Paul, you know, like, maybe we can cut here and then do an insert there so we kind of save energy and save time. Say, no, but it's, it's spectacular to do, like, one whole take. You can work on Action! In the tournament, humans battle super-powered fighters from another realm. Veteran actor Kerry Tagawa portrays the demon sorcerer yes. Shang Tsung. We've let these humans win enough. This character being different from other bad guys that I've done and having magical powers um, really from my own martial arts kind of background Continue. delved into this part that most martial artists don't think of themselves as magical beings you know? and so coming from that perspective it made the character really interesting more interesting than any other bad guy I've ever played that's for sure He's had a great effect on the cutting room as well. All the editors walk around kind of quoting Shang Tsung and quoting Kerry Tagawa. Flawless victory. I think in general, though, for bad guys, there's an attraction. I think it's not only that you love to hate him, but I think there's a certain attraction that people will have toward this character. Liu Kang is hardly alone in his desperate struggle to save our realm. The burden of responsibility also falls on Johnny Cage, played by Lyndon Ashby. The stance. Johnny Cage is very cocky. Hi, I'm Johnny Cage, and you are? Where's they meet, Kano? they don't like each other. They're each after their own thing. Uh, Lou is out to avenge his brother's death. Sonya is after Kano. Uh, and Johnny is after good press. <laughs> Just another starstruck fan, huh? And they all wind up on this huge adventure that none of them really bargained for. That's what's so neat about this movie, is that you, you see 
ordinary people in a fantastic place. And they're like fish out of water. And it's, uh, it's really fun to watch. Sonia is a really wonderful character. She's fun to play because she is. She's very strong. She's forced actually to be on this boat and embark on this adventure with two people that she knows nothing about and really could care less about because she's on a separate mission of her own. It kind of she has to. All of her strengths come out, and when she needs help, you'd be the last to know it. She'll never admit. It. I trust one person on this planet, Jack. You're talking to her. It's fun to play her because throughout the movie you'll watch her battle, maybe needing help. You'll watch her stubbornness come out, yet um, there's a really big heart in her, too. And you get a chance to see that a little bit, but, she, you know, she's, um, so there's a lot to her. She's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Kano? Hello, baby. Did you miss me? Kano is the man. My mission in this entire situation is to kill this man, to get this man, to beat this man. Oh, still concerned only with vengeance. Lord Raider at the beginning of the movie is going to explain to them what's going to happen and what is the purpose of their mission. The essence of mortal combat is not about death, but life. We talked about the character, his vision of Raiden, the fact that he wanted this guy who is a, quote, a god, uh, to have a sense of humor. The fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> So he's basically there to protect the mortal people, especially Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, and Liu Kang, to make sure that, first of all, the evil forces in the movie are not cheating to win. Your sideshow freaks attacked my fighters. That is expressly forbidden before the tournament. Everybody is learning something about himself, so they're going to come out of it being better and being bigger. You're finally learning, Liu Kang. Katana. She is the princess of our world, and actually the emperor killed my parents and adopted me in order to lay claim to the throne. So I've been always waiting to rebel against him. Would you dare interfere with the tournament? The only way I think I could have done that was to wait for Liu Kang. When she appears at the beginning, she just gives all this very important information, but in a very... Um, it's like, they're like riddles. And you see Liu Kang trying to figure them out. To win your next match, use the element which brings life. Every chance she has, she's trying to come in contact with me to tell me things. Liu, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta face yourself. This is your destiny. I challenge you to Mortal Kombat. Do you accept or yield? <laughs> When you see people fight in our movie, they're doing it. And you will see people run up walls and jump over people and twist and turn and do amazing things in one shot that you haven't seen people do in movies here for 20 years. The advantage of Robin Shu running up a wall and kicking off it is that I can put a camera on there and you can see him do it and you can see Robin's face, you can see the wall, you can see him run up and you can see him kick somebody in the head and you think, wow, that guy can do it. If you look at Hong Kong martial arts movies or action movies, the movies, frankly, in terms of our audience here, story, lighting, character development, are terrible. But the action is phenomenal. And I've always thought, how come we can't take that quality of action and put it into more of the kind of quality and look that we strive for here in Hollywood, that was the goal. The fights feature extended sequences of exquisitely choreographed martial arts. To pull this off, Kazanov had to secure the services of the world's most experienced fight coordinator, Pat Johnson. I think this first piece, Upton Carey's spinning elbow, works very well. Okay? And I think if we can lock that part in, I think we'll have made a lot of progress today. He's the best in the world. He literally is the best in the world. Pat has choreographed more successful martial arts movies, more successful action movies, more successful fight movies than anyone in the world. Martial arts is so important for our whole society. It is really the last bastion, one of the last bastions of discipline, respect, of confidence, of poise, of focus. All of these things are required. 
anyone who has had a dealing with martial artists will notice a peaceful calmness about them. The martial artists that we have in this show are true, wonderful role models, models you would want your children to follow, to emulate. This is classic American fight movie making, and then what we tried to do was push it a little bit further, you know, really push the envelope. I tell you what Pat does, which is phenomenal. He invents moves and designs fights for characters. Pat is here, and I'm from Hong Kong, or I've done so much movies in Hong Kong, and then we kind of combine our thinking and the style we want. So then we just come in the perfect place. All the fighting we do on our own. So we've been training and working and, uh, yeah, we get down and dirty. <laughs> That's why I'm really proud of what the actors did on this movie, because they were going in there and they were doing it themselves. Because of our goal to show you what these characters are experiencing, what these characters are experiencing is both real and like nothing you've ever seen before, we needed the best effects in the world. And thus Allison. I've known Allison Savage for years. We've worked together on Terminator 2. She since has gone off and done Last Action Hero and Dracula in the Shadow. I, I truly believe her to be the best special effects supervisor in the world. You know, as, as these start peeling away, I mean, they can put the door in anyway, in the plain green, you know, green screen. Mortal Kombat continues. I'm simply changing the place. I'm very excited about the effects. I think they'll be really different. I think they'll really take people by surprise. And uh, hopefully it'll lead to people going to see the movie twice. Because it'll be, they'll see it and they'll go, no, I didn't really see that. That's, and then they have to go see it again just to make sure they did see it. Alison Savage hired several companies to provide effects for the movie. RGALA provided most of the supernatural powers for the Mortal Kombat characters, including Sub-Zero's Deep Freeze. Here, martial arts expert Francois Petit prepares for what will ultimately be his frozen finale. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Our character Lou is going to be battling with Reptile, and Johnny is going to be battling with Scorpion, which has this thing coming out of his hand, and, and Raiden has this amazing electrical effect, and, um, and Sub-Zero freezes things. So I'm going to be doing all these things to these actors, and I have no idea what it's going to look like. And there's another time where um, I have to grab Reptile. I actually have to grab something that is not there. But what does it look like? Like, how many arms does it have? Or how many eyes or teeth or what? How should I react to it? Well, Robin, you know, just grab him and throw him. It's snapping at your face. You're terrified. And, you know, it's easy for me to say that. And then they have to do it. If you need the effect, then you do it. But you don't just create an effect to impress the audience. It's got to be part of the story. And that's the case in this one. We go to some very mythic, exciting, otherworldly locations. And you believe they're there. We literally scoured a lot of the world. I know people, I always hear people say that on, on these things, but we did. I mean, we, we went every place. First, what you do is you sit down in a little room, in a little office, and you think, what does Shang Tsung's island look like? Where does Scorpion have his final fight with Johnny Cage? What does that look like? And you imagine it, and then you go off to find it. It's not dictated the other way. And we found it in remote corners of Thailand. There's a real beauty to nature, and there's a beauty to buildings that were constructed a thousand years ago that have been falling apart ever since. And it's very hard, if not impossible, to, to recreate that. And that's very exciting as a filmmaker in this day and age to be able to go and get a canvas that's that big, that's so huge, to film these fantastic old temples. At the end of the day, all the strategies, all the, all the talk, all the planning, all the money. We're having a blast here because we're making something that we really think will be fun to see, and that's what we want you to experience too. Just a lot of fun. <laughs>